Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Muli, uh, we would like to welcome you sa aming uh, Isip Isa Conversations on Faith and Society. Ngayon po, uh, may, may, mainit po yung uh, mga debates around vaccines. And malami po sa ating mga uh, communities, lalo mga faith-based, ay nahati dito. Nag may mga nagsasabi na conspiracy lang yan, gano'n-gano'n, ano, ng mga pharma, uh, mga drug companies. At uh, meron din mga nagsasabi, maraming mga uh, dangers sa mga vaccine na yan, mahirap magpano. At meron din po mga nagsasabi na kailangan talaga if you want a herd immunity. So, sa mga ganito pong mga usapin, we have asked uh, ang aming pong uh, medical expert dito, si Dr. Sally Bios. Nabigyan po tayo ng uh, paglilinaw tungkol sa mga issues that we are facing in relation sa vaccine. So, we would like to thank si Sally for being with us ili sa Isip Isa. Marie, would you like to introduce si Sally? Yes, Doc. Um, before I introduce Dr. Sally, meron tayong ipapakitang video sa ating mga viewers ngayon. We just want to acknowledge that this video is not our own. This is actually from Rappler, our kasangga in truth-telling. So, panoorin po muna natin ito and then I'll introduce to you our very important and dear guest sa ating lahat. Let's watch this video. It's 2020 all over again in the Philippines. More than a year after the pandemic began, cases are surging at unprecedented alarming levels. Since March 19, 2021, the health department has been reporting more than 5,000 new cases of COVID-19 daily. On Friday, March 26, new cases reached 9,838 and are still rising. Experts project that by the end of March, cases can soar to more than 10,000 daily. While other countries are slowly going back to normal, the Philippines seems to be worse off than ever. Speaking of contact tracing, the government this month just came up with a standard contact tracing system through the Stay Safe app nationwide, at a time when cases already reached alarming levels. Report your health condition by answering the checklist on the app. It's a year too late. Now, the Department of Interior and Local Government is telling LGUs to drop their own contact tracing systems. But do these contact tracing systems really work? Magalong himself admits, contact tracing is the government's weakest point in its pandemic response. By now, other countries are already halfway through their vaccination programs. In Southeast Asia, the Philippines is the last country to kick off. All thanks to the delays in orders and vague timelines of vaccine arrivals. So far, 76% of the 1.125 million doses of donated vaccines have already been deployed. Only around 11,000 healthcare workers are vaccinated per day. At this rate, Senator Ping Lakson calculates that the goal to vaccinate 70 million Filipinos by year-end will have to stretch to almost 12 years. The challenge for the government is not only to secure enough supplies of the vaccines, but also to convince Filipinos to take the jobs amid low vaccine trust. Now, Metro Manila and four nearby provinces, what the government calls the NCR Plus, are again placed under a stricter general community quarantine or GCQ until April 4. Experts also propose a circuit breaker lockdown, a hard GCQ, or a soft MECQ, whatever those terms mean. But these are only making Filipinos even more confused. What's clear is that the people need more urgency, compassion, and accountability from the government during this pandemic. But that's wishful thinking. From the looks of it, it's 2020 all over again. Alright, maraming salamat sa Rappler for that very informative video. Our um, research and publication staff uh, commented 
dito sa ating Facebook uh, comment section on the link when uh, where you can see the full video. Ayan. So, papakilala ko na po ang ating guest. Hindi naman siya stranger sa isip isa. In fact, isa siya sa mga kauna-unahan natin na naging bisita sa isip isa when we launched it sa FB Live. Kaya napaka-important ng bisita na ito and very dear sa ating lahat, sa aming lahat dito sa ISAC. Siya din po ay fellow ng ISAC ano, at member ng ISAC. Um, our guest, Dr. Sally Villos, is uh, an alumna of the University of the Philippines College of Medicine. At siya din po ay dating nagtuturo dito. Ngayon ay nagpahinga na siya sa pagtuturo. Pero hindi siya nagpapahinga sa pagsasaliksik at pag-aaral. In fact, pinag-uusapan lang namin yung mga studies na gagawin niya at uh, hopefully ay ma-share niya sa isip-isak pag ready na. So hindi ko na kayo pahihintayin. Excited na tayong mag-usap tungkol sa bakuna. Friends from Isip Isaac, let's all welcome our dear friend and fellow sa Isaac, Doctora Sally Vios. Magandang gabi, Doctor Sally. Magandang gabi naman, Marie. Thank you again, no, for the invitation. Sabi ko, oops, bagay once a year lang naman last year and then this year. <laughs> Salamat. <laughs> Opo, siguro kahit mas madalas pa dahil napakalaking usapin ngayon ng kalusugan at itong pandemya na ito. Dr. Sally, um, simulan ko na po ang ating mga tanong. No? So when we uh, had our conversations here at Easy Pisak, it was June last year. Oh. Alam, natatandaan ko yun, kayo po yung second episode namin, wala pang bakuna. We are all yeah. waiting for it. Pero ngayon, lumabas na at marami ng variants. Parang yung COVID-19 na <laughs> nag-mutate din into different variants. Yes, Doc. And so, I just want to ask you, looking at the situation in our country, how do you think we are uh, doing with the rollout of the vaccines? At uh, siguro yun po muna. How do you think? Ano yung nakikita ninyo? How do you perceive the rollout now of the vaccines in the Philippines? All right. Sabi nga ako sa mga kaibigan kong in-invite ko, naku, merong heart-to-heart -heart ngayong gabi tungkol dyan sa vaccine, no? Oo. So, yung rollout, may, may programa naman talaga ang uh, DOH, no? At alam natin lahat na merong mga uh, stratification, no? Yung A1, ito yung mga frontliners, yung A2, senior citizens, no? Yung A3, mga Filipinos 18 to uh, 59 na may mga core mobids and the uh, 4 you know, the rest no na nasusunod naman yan and um meron tayong uh, 17 regions no at dito sa 17 regions na ito meron total of 3500 vaccine sites all right Meron na kung pamangkin sa Mindanao, no? Uh, tinitrain, tinitrain sila kung paano uh, mag-educate, mag-inject, no? Pero, in spite of the fact na may, may planong ganun, mukhang ang bagal talaga, no? So, amili na natin, uh, medyo may kabagalan yung ating uh, pag-roll out, no? Um, yun. Uh, for example, no? We have we have a total dose of four million forty thousand six hundred uh, vaccines, no, available both from Sinovac and uh, AstraZeneca. All right. So four million na ito, eh, actually mata translate mo lang yan sa two million ang pwedeng mag-vaccinate kasi two doses eh. No? All right. So sa uh, four million na ito ay sa totoo lang, 320,586 fully vaccinated. And most of these are health workers, no? Uh, amounting to more or less 0.29%. All right, 0.29%. And our target to uh, reach the herd immunity is 70% of the population. So, talagang malayo, no? So, sabi nga ni Senator Ping Lacson, 12 years, no? So, sabi, sabi ko, tatawad ako ng 2 years, 10 years. <laughs> Kasi doon sa isang mathematical computation, 10 years, no? Um, doon niya, no? We're just actually vaccinating mga 36,500 on the average a day, no? So, matagal pa tayo talaga. Yeah. Wow. 
matagal pa. Well, gusto po namin yan. We want real talk. We want the, the, the truth. No sugar coating of it. Kasi parang minsan, nasusugarcoat na. Excellent ang response. Now we are doing better than other countries. So I, I, I'm happy and very thankful that you are giving us the, the real talk on this, Dr. Sally. What do you think are the factors po that are affecting this mabagal na rollout? Ika-clarify ko lang yung data ko, base yan sa data ng DOH, no? Oo, na nilalabas din nila. Oo, okay. So, titingnan dapat yung mga data. Tama naman yung data, pero siyempre, yung pag-present niya, ano, it, it matters a lot. Maraming factors, no, to uh, consider, no? Una, I think the primary reason really is yung availability ng vaccine. Alright. Una, hindi tayo talaga nagmamanufacture ng vaccine. Uh, natutunan ko many, many, many years ago, nagmamanufacture pala tayo, but uh, somehow nawala yun sa atin. Alright. So, we are really dependent on what the uh, pharmaceutical companies no, uh, bring in. Alright. Sa um, usapin ng uh, vaccine, meron tinatawag na COVAX. No? Ito yung, I, I think, familiar lahat tayo dito. Ito yung in ng WHO primarily to assist, to help the developing countries and yung talagang medyo poor countries because they believe will not be able to afford no, to procure on their own uh, the much-needed vaccines. So talagang lumalabas dito yung uh, inequity no ng ng mundo no <laughs> all right yung of course yung mga western countries they have the capability to manufacture no mm -hmm. so the time sa US na prioritize nga nila talaga yung citizen we nila eh <laughs> hindi sila nag-export no talagang uh, ano they really focused on their uh, uh, citizens no Israel yung uh, US no although yung Israel nag-import then no now India is also a big manufacturer and then we may ask if iyan ko lang ng konti no ano ba yung nangyayari sa India na ngayon no grabe mas grabe talaga yung nangyari and yet we all thought na wow they are a big manufacturer of ano vaccine yung pala na pag na basa natin no mga 2% pa lang ng population nila ang nagbabaccinate. The rest kasi ni export ng government. No? Uh, I don't know for what reason. Maybe uh, siguro um, income din yun eh ng bansa. Ano? But imagine a huge portion of their vaccines are being exported. So, yung, yung availability. All right. So limited lang yung initial uh, binigay ng uh, COVAX, no? Ito yung AstraZeneca, initially Pfizer pero uh, nag maraming pangyayari diyan no sa Pfizer so hindi natuloy pero it's coming daw sometime in May this month, no? All right. Tapos s'yempre sa pagpre-prepare niyan, uh, marami ding mga technicalities, no? You have to ano set up your um, freezer no yung cold storage and so forth no eh mahal din yan talaga kanya uh, it has caused some ano delay no uh, and then yung um pagti-train no ng mga LGUs no preparation ng LGUs kasi doon ilalagay yan eh, sa, eh ibibigay no yung responsibility no sa mga LGUs Sempre kailangan mo i-prepare yung site. There should be emergency uh, provisions, no, in case magkaroon ng mga allergic reactions, no, may available ambulance. So ang sabi ng Manila ay uh, nag-prepare naman sila, no, but I really don't know anong level ng preparation sa lahat ng mga, you know, barangay. I can imagine Metro Manila, Quezon City must prepare because they are big cities, no? But what about the other municipalities? All right, so yon, no? Mga reasons yon. And uh, I think then, um, at the, you know, yung the, the basic, uh, lev at the basic level, no? Yung uh, preparation then na ating ano, government. Um, alam mo, believe ako dun sa mga advisors talaga ng mga IATF. I know several of them and they're really dedicated civil servants. You know, 
kung alam nyo lang yung piles of documents that I have to that they have to read you know to uh, para sift through all the documents kailan bang i-approve tong vaccine ito hindi grabe yung files na yan right so you all know no? at that level okay pero syempre somehow pag lumabas na yung um, recommendations mo that it will be translated to policies and then the policy translated to you know how it's going to be executed syempre maraming usapin na yan no maraming usapin na yan maraming factors na papasok economic political no cultural no? so so ganun yung ano yan uh, hindi lang isa hindi lang ano pero you know it's a flow may workflow yan oo so yon so i think uh, ang primary factor talaga ng delay ay yung ano availability at saka mukha hindi tayo nag ano masyado ng foresight You know, mm-hmm. ano ba talaga plan A, plan B, you know, when vaccines came, uh, come, and then uh, also, um, marami tayong inutang, ano, na, na pera, supposedly, for, for that, no, and uh, therefore, we expect, no, kung madelay man, darating, no, kasi may pambayad tayo, supposedly, <laughs> dahil utang, eh, you know. Trillions. Okay, oo, oh. oh, so, dapat, titingnan natin yung accountability no mm-hmm. ng ating mga officials yes. tama po Dr. Sally sa mixing response niyo na yun ang dami niyong sabi nga namin na bulls ay na topic so you're right from <laughs> development to manufacturing to distribution hanggang sa papunta sa mga LG sa mga braso natin it's a multi-step process right. it's mm-hmm. a multi-step process and we need to uh, really understand just um, maybe One of my curiosities, uh, sabi ninyo po, um, at, at ito yung isa sa important point na nabanggit din ninyo, that um, uh, inequity is also one factor dito sa bakuna. So the richer countries are first in line kasi nga naman nag-invest sila sa development. Oh, oh. Kaya sila din naman ang mauuna. In fact, um, no, we've been doing research leading to this night too and we found out na laki-laki ng pinor na budget ng US for this. And that's why they were able to secure uh, enough vaccines for their population so much. So let you just go there. May nag-invite nga sa aking kaibigan na itatago ko sa pangalang Dr. Melba. Sabi, Dr. Melba, alika na dito sa US at dito ka na lang magpabakuna. So mabilis ang access sa kanila. No? Um, where do you place the Philippines sa pila? Sa tingin ninyo do? Of course, sabi na natin yan, nabanggit natin yan, and I love your paalala to be so watchful on the trillions na inutang natin bantayan natin yan kasi responsibilidad natin yan ng mga mamamayan. Pero sa pila, Doc Sally, where do you place the Philippines? Bottom one-third? Or medyo nakakangat-angat ba? Um, from your lens, uh, someone na um, may alam sa medisina at nakakarinig from IATF, where mm-hmm. is the Philippines in the pila? Mm-hmm. Uh, Palagay ko naman, wala naman tayo sa bottom line, no? sa bottom, oo. Siguro mga bandang gitna, no? uh, ganyan. Kasi um, may mga promises naman, like, you know, dumating na yung Sputnik, no? dumating na yung Sputnik, and uh, very positive naman yung sa AstraZeneca, no? na dadating. Dapat dumating yan, itong May, kasi ako, June na ng June, ang second dose ko. <laughs> all right and then uh kasi nga uh, more or less uh, you know patap- hindi naman patapos pero at least i think 57% ng population ng US na vaccinated no ang Israel mga around that much then no mga 50% no so i from the news no mukhang bibigyan naman tayo yung bigay na yan syempre bibigyan no <laughs> oh, eh makakarating naman sa atin yung uh, ibang mga vaksina yan. So I I I think to be very positive, no. Uh, kung hindi natin sasabayan ng kung you know, kung ano-ano mang extra diyan na makakasagabal, I I think they should come, no. Uh, June maybe, some May, ganun. Yung Sputnik dumating. <laughs> All right. I love that positive uh, tone but very realistic then. Salamat Dr. Sally. May tanong po tayo from Timo. Sabi niya with all the poor people who are not registered, 
in the government among informal settlers and the homeless uh, in areas of multiple cases ng COVID. I feel that COVID will be staying for a longer time and perhaps not to go away. There are so many people who will not be able to get the vaccine. What are your thoughts on this comment from team mo, Dr. Mm-hmm. Sally? Um, I hope not. No? Kasi... Uh... Yan nga eh, yung mga priorities, no? Uh, priorities. Uh, in fact, doon sa number three, ano, yung kasama ng mga senior citizens, actually, are those who belong to poor communities. Kasama sila doon eh. Sa batch na yon with the senior citizens. No? So, honestly, I, I cannot tell for sure how they have been rolling out the vaccines in these communities, in the poor communities. No? But uh, I heard, no, and nakita man natin sa TV, alimbawa, dyan sa may Batasan, I think, Tandansora, and then some areas dito, no, sa, sa Quezon City, nag-roll out sila. Pero ano yung percentage ng no, roll-out nila to these poor communities? I really don't know. And uh, also, yun nga, sa senior citizens, uh, tinatanong namin sa barangay kasi yung husband ko, si Pastor Nove, senior yan, wala pa rin ano, you know, uh, vaccine. Eh, ang sinasabi, eh, darating na ho, hindi namin alam. So, they are supposed to be this, uh, yung ating mga kababayan from the poor communities. Kasama dapat sila yan, no? Sa, batch na yan. Uh, honestly, I don't have any idea except what I see from uh, TV, no news, na inaano sila, inibigan. But they should be included. They should be on the top uh, priority. Uh, part ng priority yan. Opo. So sa mga kasama natin sa Isip Isa who may know stories of our mga kababayan, kapatid na indigents who have been vaccinated or sadly kung na-refuse sila, maybe you want to share your stories also sa comment section. We want to hear that. Medyo um, mag-shift gear na po ako okay. papunta sa mga usapan ng mga vaccine myths o oh. mga mito sa bakuna. <laughs> COVID-19 vaccine. Apo. COVID-19 vaccine, sabi nila, is the record-breaking fastest vaccine that has ever been developed. So, ang isa sa mga mito ay, this COVID-19 vaccines are not safe because of how fast they were created. What are your thoughts on this, Dr. Sally? Okay. I remember nag-lecture na ako niyan. Eh. I mean, nag-present ako niyan uh, sa church namin at saka sa ABCO. In fact, na-invite ako sa app niya. No? So, ang timeline talaga ng clinical trials, no? uh, nag-range siya from 7 to 10 years, sometimes 12 years. No? Hindi lang vaccine development, kundi pati uh, drug development. Matagal yan kasi meron ka mga basic uh, research sa animals and then on humans. Tapos pag okay yung phase 1 sa humans, saka ka lang pupunta sa phase 2. Yung vaccine natin ngayon sa COVID, talagang mabilis. No? Pero may reason din naman. All right. Kasi itong COVID-19, actually, kamag-anak siya ng SARS virus no? na matagal ng pinag-aaralan. All right. Remember, we had that MERS at saka kung ano-ano pa from Middle East. Magkakamag-anak yan. More or less, they have the same, uh, you know, protein uh, structure and spike. Nag-iiba-iba lang yan sa mga, you know, um, uh, what do you call this, mga D- uh, uh, RNA nila and so forth, no? yung genetic uh, component nila. But marami nang alam tungkol dyan. And because of this, they took advantage of the knowledge from SARS. All right. Mm-hmm. And then also, we had that Ebola Diba? We had that Ebola outbreak in uh, Africa and they were able to develop a platform of uh, vaccines similar to what we have now. No? So, mm-hmm. parang napaka-dali na. Parang ano yan eh, recipe you know, mm-hmm. sa laboratory. Ito yun, ito yung gagawin mo. Kailangan mo nang mak- ma- makita yung receptors sa cell na pupuntahan itong back molecule na ito, nagkawa ka. Alright, so parang may recipe na yan. Kanya, mabilis. Alright. Now, pagdating sa clinical trials sa human, siyempre, uuna talaga yung phase one. Because phase one is the first introduction of any drug or vaccine to human beings. Alright. Kung ang tinitingnan mo dyan sa phase one, safety eh. 
All right? Hindi pa masyado yung efficacy. More of safety. So, kung talaga may toxicity, uh, etchipwera na yan, hindi na yan makakarating sa phase 2. All right? So, maganda yung profile, acceptable, yung safety nitong mga vaccines na ito, kanya nag-phase 2. Actually, ang ginawa nila, nag-parallel clinical trial kasi dati series yan eh. After okay. phase 1, you go to phase 2. Minsan may parallel, pero generally series yan. Pero ngayon, ginawa nilang parallel. So, parallel ang phase 2, ang phase 3, parallel, no? So, in other words, nagkaroon sila ng, ano, ng mga analysis. Alright. And then, meron kasing provision, ito na yung mga emergency UA, no? Na, pag narating mo ng, um, I think, uh, uh, ilang months, no? And uh, so many participants, pwede ka na mag-interim analysis to find out how efficacious and safe the vaccine, the vaccines are. No? So, ganun ang nangyari dyan. And ngayon, mabilis na mag-conduct ng clinical trial because uh, recruitment of participants are global. Unlike before, kung saan dinevelop yung vaccine or yung drug, doon lang sila mag-clinical trial. Ngayon ang enrollment global. So, uh, uh, mababasa natin no, na meron sa Middle East, meron sa Brazil, meron sa Mexico, meron din sa... At kasama tayo doon sa solidarity trial na ginawa ng, uh, ginawa ng protocol ng WHO. Alright? So, ganun ang nangyari. So, parang mabilis. Pero, uh, sa totoo lang, may mga steps yan talaga. I'm a bit privy actually dito sa mga protocols no uh, kasi uh, isa sa mga ano ko ngayon work tinitingnan ko yung ibang mga you know the ethical uh, concerns no natong mga clinical trial oh. so yo thank you dr sali so hindi naman ito basta nilabas lang dumaan siya sa mga oh, yes. uh -oh. and it's really helpful to think na there have been viruses na kamag-anak ng COVID-19 na pinag-aralan na din noon. Mm. Dr. Sally, tanongin ko lang sa inyo itong mga tanong ng ating mga uh, viewers. Dalawa ito eh, tungkol sa herd immunity. One from Kim and from Sir Mario. So, basahin ko na lang siguro yung kay Sir Mario. Sabi niya, uh, the government, uh, is the government correct in saying we'll reach herd immunity by, no by November? How can that be when our vaccine rollout is so slow uh, at the rate that we, uh, it, uh, it will take us so many years? Nabanggit na yan kanina natin ano po kay, yes. sir, uh, kay, kay Senator Laxon. Pero um, sabi mo, Dr. Sally, 10 years na, na, <laughs> na, 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 na bago mag-herd immunity if we continue with the rate that we are yes. going. 36,000, 36, imagine, uh, per, per day for the entire Philippines. And we are, what, how many ilang million tayo? 110 million. All right, then 70%, which is around 70 million. So, mahina ako sa math eh. Pero palagay ko, <laughs> hindi tayo aamot. <laughs> Hindi Ganun naman tayo. Opo. So sana bilis sana, no? lalo na pag dumating na yung mga inaantay-antay natin na bakuna. May tanong din uh, prior to that si Rach Perete. Sabi niya, if maaga ba tayo nakapagpa-reserve ng vaccine sa mga pharma companies, sa tingin niyo po ba ay may bakuna na mga Pilipino ngayon? What do you think about that, Dr. Sally? Nabanggit natin yung multi-step kanina, but maybe you want to add comment on that. Aba, kung nagmaaga pa tayo nag-reserve at nagbayad agad eh, siguro, ang sagot ko lang dyan, why not, no? Why not? No. Um, pwede, no? Uh, alam ko, like for example, uh, yung ibang bansa talagang may, pay, may advance, advance payment. <laughs> yes, yes. Ito yung thing kasi natin, no? Sa totoo lang, although we are grateful na meron tayong mga pharmaceutical companies that do R&D, research and development, no? To improve the, uh, for example, yung health ng mga tao, alright, no? On one hand, siyempre business, ano din yan, they have to recoup also their uh, you know, meron sila dapat yung ROI nila, no? Return of investment. Okay. Yes. Oo. Oh, oh. Meron maganda, din sila yan. Oo. Oh. Oh. 
Correct. Yes, Doc. May magandang tanong po si Professor Mary Racelis. Hello po. Good evening. I'm sure Ate Melva is so delighted to know that you are with us tonight. Prof. Mary, sabi niya po, how can certain religious groups who feel that the science as represented by vaccine goes against their religion as in the case of many American evangelical groups? Very salient point. Uh, Ma Mary, mamaya tatala kaya natin yan. Kasama yan sa mga mito na dapat nating i-debunk with science and with sound thinking. Kasi gift din naman ng Lord ang sound thinking, hindi po ba? Hindi lang faith, pero pati sound mind. Bigay din yan ng Diyos. Pangalawang mito ng vaccine na gusto nating clarify. Totoo ba, Dr. Sally, that when you take the vaccine, the person's DNA will be altered? No, we are hearing these things. What say you about this? Right. Oo nga, no? Hindi. Yeah, no? I can... Look straight sa eyes mo, Marino. Hindi. All right. Why? Kasi yung MRA, no, yung MRA na pinapasok diyan, no, yung uh, messenger RNA. Hindi yan pumapasok sa loob ng nucleus. Di ba tayo may cell? Yung cell may nucleus. Yung nucleus nandoon yung ating DNA material. All right? Mm-hmm. Yung DNA material sa nucleus, yun yung may, nandun yung genes natin, yung chromosomes, you know, that, you know, uh, well, ayun, make us as uh, who we are. Ganyan, no? Yung pinapasok na MRI, hindi yung pumapasok sa nucleus. Hanggang labas lang siya. So, hindi yan na-alter. Alright? Kasi, yung mga nag-proteins ng spike na minamanufactures, sa cytoplasm lang, out of the nucleus. Kasi nandun yung mga factory ng mga proteins no? sa, sa labas. So, hindi yan papasok. So, hindi ma-alter yung ating genetic material. Ayan. So, very clear. The answer <laughs> is no. Malinaw. Hindi, ma- hindi tayo magiging X-Men. Hindi tayo tutubo ng balahibo o kaya kaliskis. <laughs> Ayan. Okay. Okay. Kaibigan, Okay. Ang tayo ay gaganda at babata, why not? No? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good invitation uh-huh. to have. <laughs> Yung <Yes>. anti-aging. <laughs> oh, all right. Another um, uh, vaccine myth na gusto nating address. Sabi ay kapag ka ang isang tao daw po ay may food allergy, so kaya ay buntis at immunocompromised. Dapat daw po hindi magpabakuna. Ano pong masasabi niyo doon, Dr. Sai? Okay. So, isa-isahin natin, no? Okay. Mm-hmm. Food allergy. Mm-hmm. Hindi po yan contraindication. Alright? So, ang mahalaga lang po ay sabihin sa inyong doktor, no, nurse, na magbabakuna na kayo ay may food allergy. Alright? Diyan po sa mga center, kanya nga mahalaga ang preparation ng LGU. Dapat may naka-standby na Uh, ambulance, may naka-standby na emergency kit, lalo-lalo na yung tinatawag namin epinephrine. No? Sa US nga, mga pasyente, kanya-kanyang dala na tinatawag na epifen. No? Eh, wala pa yata dito yan. Eh. But dapat, yung uh, gagawa niyang uh, va- uh, vaccination, may ganyang mga preparation para madali na. No? May oxygen, ganyan. Okay. Ako, mayroong seasonal asthma. Alright. At ang seasonal asthma ko ay talagang minsan kailangan ako mag-nebulizer at mag-puff. But I have my vaccine. Alright. And then second, ano yun? Um, pregnant you know, women. Oh, sige. Una natin pregnant women. Okay. Ang history ng uh, pregnant women sa clinical trial before, hindi sila kasama. No? Kasi uh, classified sila as vulnerable population because of the fetus. Uh, all right. But now, ang uh, medical community and the medical research community, malaki ang gap no, ng knowledge kung ano ba effect ng mga gamot or vaccines sa pregnant women. Kasi wala tayong data. Alright. So ngayon, ini-encourage na in clinical trials, if appropriate, hindi naman lahat, no? if appropriate lang, so, ay pwedeng sama ang pregnant women provided meron talagang informed consent, alam nila yung list, no? and preferably sa uh, after the first trimester. 
Why? Kasi yung first trimester na yan, dyan yung cellular and organ differentiation ng fetus. No? Ayaw natin mag-interfere dyan. Alright? Pero after na ma-develop na yung fetus, no, pwede i-consider. Alright. So ano nangyari? Sa US, yung uh, Pfizer and Moderna, sinama nila ang limited number no, of pregnant women. No? At saka yung ibang mga women na nagpagpakuna, hindi pala nila alam na buntis sila. Or, uh, hindi sila buntis, pero nung nakareceive na sila, hindi nila alam na nabuntis pala sila. Okay. So, uh, ang ginawa nila, in-enroll nila ito talaga, at saka meron sila talagang very, no, I, I must say, very good tracking system kung saan yung mga nag-volunteer talagang may app sila sa cellphone at eh, inaano nila regularly, no? Kung ano yung nararamdaman nila, kung ano yung nangyayari sa kanilang katawan. Alright. You know what? Last week, merong publication from a New England Medical Journal about this. Alright. So, meron tayong uh, data, fresh data, maganda. No? So, um, ang ano nila, Teka ha, titignan ko eh. Ayan, ito, no? So, April 21, may article sa New England Medical Journal, no? Uh, Nag-enroll nila December 2020 hanggang February 2021. So, ano yung findings nila? Uh, they have uh, 3,958 participants. So, ito yung mga pregnant women. Okay. And um, 827 among the 3,958 uh, pregnant women had completed pregnancy. So, nanganak, nanganak na, no? Yung 857, no? Of which, okay, uh, 1,315 or by percent na lang, ano? 13.9% resulted in a pregnancy loss. So, mayroong nagkaroon ng spontaneous abortion. All right, and then uh, although 86% resulted in a live birth, normal yung mga bata, okay. walang problema. 86.1%. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, oh. So ang conclusion nila ay wala namang uh, you know very significant red flag na pwedeng mangyari, no? Uh, okay. women, pregnant women na na-vaccinate. Pero okay. syempre, okay, ito yun, no? partial lang yan. Alright? At saka hindi pa tapos yung clinical trial. And then, pangatlo, sa clinical trial kasi kung naging, uh, kung nagkaroon ng pregnancy, mm -hmm. right? imo-monitor mo yung bata after birth up to one year. Alright, just to be sure walang mga, you know, a metabolic or a congenital anomaly. So, hindi pa tapos yung monitoring. But we have data on pregnant women. Okay. Yeah, yun yun. yun. Latest. No. Init, init latest. pa sa ano? Oh, oh, oh. Hot <laughs> of the press. Ayan. Thank you for parsing that sa atin. So, 86% oh, of you know. Teka, yung immunosuppress. Ah, yes, correct, correct. Oh, oh. So, sino ito mga immunosuppress, no? Uh, ito yung mga, ano ba, may mga cancer, malignancy on uh, immunotherapy, no? yung may mga immune, ano, rheumatoid arthritis. Wala namang absolute contraindication. Ang mahalaga lang po ay pumunta kayo, you know, by telemedicine kahit na ano, but you have to consult your attending physician or your oncologist, no? and preferably get a uh, medical certificate para sa ganun naman ay maibibigay doon sa magpapakuna. At okay. sila yung magdi-decide kung pwede ka bang bakunahan o hindi. No? So, ito yung mga pasyente. You consult your doctor. Ayan. So, wala naman ako masasabing general rule dyan, no? so But generally, hindi naman absolute contraindication. But you have to consult your physician. Ayun. I think that's the most important pala, paalala sa ating mga kapatid din. Kung sila ay nagdududa, talk to your attending physician and get okay. advice from them. Mag tayong ma-debilitate ng fear at wag din naman tayong magpadalos-dalos.
Okay. Uh, let's rely on the wisdom ng experts. Thank you, Dr. Sally. One more myth. Bago tayo pumunta dun sa theological, sabi na ni Jonik Banal, <laughs> maganda to Ate Melba, think about this. Sabi niya, some Christians believe that the vaccine has something to do with the 666. So karugtong to ng comment ni Prof. Mary. What can you say about this? I'll ask, uh, the, of course, we will ask Dr. Melba sa paglalagom niya later on the theological view too. And we will also ask Dr. Sally, Tabi lang muna natin ng konti yan. Isa pa pong myth na kailangan nating i-clarify. Can we get COVID-19 from the vaccines? May mga nagsasabi kasi na baka pag nagpabakuna ka, lalo kang magka-COVID. Okay. Ah, dahil sa bakuna, anong masasabi niyo doon, Dr. Sally? Okay. Wala pong uh, danger na maka- magkakaroon kayo ng COVID directly from the vaccine. Because wala po sa vaccine na na-develop no na mayroong live attenuated virus wala po niyan all right so hindi po posible na magkaroon ng uh, covid as a result of the vaccine ngayon i'm sure minsan may marami kang kwento eh you know nagpapaksin ito yung kaibigan ko tapos after three days no na positive o nilagnat nagkaroon ng covid eventually Pwede ko kasi ang mangyari niya, no? Be- even before the vaccination or just before the vaccination, nag-i-incubate na. Nakakuha na siya, no? Eh, hindi naman tinitest kasi, no? Hindi naman, because it's not really necessary to get an artist's PCR before a vaccine, no? So, posible na nag-i-incubate na siya noong siya ay ma-vaccinate. Kanya po nagkaroon siya ng ano COVID. ng um, covid pero hindi po 'yon dahil sa yes bakuna right. okay malinaw na po rin oo oh, okay. in fact kung nabakunahan ka at magpa rtcpr magpa pcr test ka walang lalabas na virus doon maybe mm-hmm. antibodies but not the virus yes kasi yes. wala si introduce na live live That's okay it. At wala po sa mga bakuna ngayon ang may ganyan na live. Wala. Meron okay. lang tayo yung sa China, no? Okay. Yung um, inactivated and the uh, uh, MRA uh, platforms and the uh, vector platforms. Okay, Doc. Pero walang buhay na COVID-19. Okay, malinaw na malinaw. Sana nalinawan at natanggal ang mga veil ng ating mga kapatid sa ating mga tanungan. Doc Sally, ito na. Pag-usapan natin yung nabanggit nila, Prof. Mary at uh, ni Jonek. Sabi ni Prof. Mary, um, there are so many religious groups going against science. No? Particularly, lalo na sa uh, American Evangelical Groups na pinapakinggan ng ating mga, um, of course, kapatid na mga Pilipinas sa pananampalataya. At yun nga, yung sinabi ni Jonik sa 666. At if I may add, no, ang dami ko nakikita na ito daw COVID-19 ay create talaga, conspiracy. No? Uh, and, at paraming Christians na nagsasabi, huwag kayong magpabakuna kasi... Ano yan? May chip na ilalagay sa inyo. Please let's clarify that, Dr. Sally. And maybe later, Dr. Melba also will respond to that. At right. kayo po muna, Dr. Sally. Oh. Sa pagkaalam ko, walang yung mga chip, chips na yan. Eh. No? Posible. Tapos pangalawa, sabi ko nga, okay, sige, nagpa-AstraZeneca ako. So, ibig sabihin niya, may 666 na ako. No? So, sabi ko, pag uh, second coming, di ba? sa revelation no may mga identify yung 666 no ay hindi mo bang sabihin eh you know uh, hindi natitingnan ng Panginoon no yung uh, yung puso ng mga tao at makikita lang yung 666 yung yung bakuna mo <laughs> na no? bakuna ay to 666 hindi sabi ko hindi na kaya titingnan ng Panginoon no yung puso <laughs> ng mga tao diyan ano sabi ko oo na ay nako sabi ko and besides parang napaka you know it's uh, out of ano talaga yung may chips na okay. yung mga ganong conjecture ay out of reality at uh, hindi uh-huh. siya tunay na backed up by science I think we really need, no, if I may just inject, kailangan talaga nating magbuo ng, ng community 
na, na marunong tumingin pag ang balita ay peke at hindi. Exactly. Check your check your sources, di ba? Sabi nga natin sa research. Oh. Dr. Melbs, would you like to respond now or would you hold it for the integration? De, ngayon na, ngayon na. Okay, sige Maka, May po. mga tanong pa sila eh. Sige well, po. first of all, siguro dapat ma-investigate ano yung theological background of all this talk about yung 666, we are at the end times, at dahil sovereignty is a sovereign <coughs> Diyos, uh, hindi na kailangan na mag-worry-worry uh, pa. No? We, we just, you know, let it be and so on. Uh, siguro dapat we need to be, sabi nga ng mga Latin Americans, hermeneutically suspicious. In other words, how do we read itong pandemic? No? How do we read our times? And how do we read scripture then? Dapat, ano yung mga lenses na ginagamit natin? Kung tatanungin ninyo, itong mga conspiracy theories, ang lens niyan is the American religious right. Na unfortunately, is being exported to us. And to all over the world, no? Sa Africa, everywhere. Na ang pananaw palagi, eh, huwag na tayong mag maggawa ng uh, anything about social transformation o mga science-science pa, ganyan-ganyan. Maguguno na ang mundo at itong epidemic na to is a sign that we are nasa last days na tayo and so on. Well, in the first place, theologically, ang last days, yung end times, nag-umpisa na 2,000 years ago. In other words, that's why nung Acts chapter 2, you remember, dun sa speech ni, ni Peter no? sa Pentecost, sab he was explaining kung bakit uh, they were speaking in tongues. Sabi niya, itong phenomenon na to is a sign that we are in the last days as prophesied by Joel. Young men shall dream dreams, you know, the men and women, daughters and sons will prophesy, etc. In other words, doon pa lang sa landmark na speech na yun, sinasabi, we are now in the last days and these are signs. No? Uh, so, 2,000 years ago pa yun. Uh, and I think we need to understand na historically, there are times when palaging ang feeling natin talagang magugunaw na ang mundo. For instance, in, in, the, in the year 250, yung tinatawag na uh, uh, plague, no? which was named after a bishop, of, yung Bishop of Carthage, no? si Cyprian. Ang tawag nga doon ay Cyprian plague. Uh, and people were dying 5,000 a day, ganun-ganon. And in fact, that was the, the beginning of the end for the Roman Empire. Kasi yung mga soldiers who were manning yung mga borders ng Roman Empire were starving and ganun-ganon. So, at, uh, it, it was the Christians actually uh, who, who were going into the cities. Yung mga iba, umalis na sa mga cities dahil sa plague. Pero yung mga Christians were going and salvaging sino man ang mga pwede nilang madampot, no? ang mga biktima ng, and who were suffering yung plague. Now, notice, nung panahon na yun, kahit yung si Cyprian, si Bishop Cyprian was saying, parang end of the world na. Now, historically, may mga ganong uh, periods talaga. Pero I think, sabi nga ni Jesus, mahirap yung, yung sasabihin natin patapos, end times na ito. Kasi, Maraming ganitong periods throughout history. At ang maliwanag lang, nagumpisa na 2,000 years ago. At hindi lang, lang po yun. Sinasabi po sa atin na sabi ni Jesus, you, you neither know the day nor the hour. Ang importante lang, you be watchful. You be vigilant. And do what you need to do as people of God. no So, hindi po ito summons for us to sit on our hands and just evangelize. Sabi nga ng mga tao, oh, evangelize na tayo. Ano ba? Ano ba yung, you know, why do... I think you need, we need to understand na ang project ng Diyos is the creation of a new heaven and a new earth. It's not primarily that we get saved out of this earth. Ang gusto na lang natin, magkaroon tayo ng ticket to heaven. Ay, hindi po yun. Ang project ng Diyos is to have a new heaven and a new earth. And He is inviting us to be part of that. So sabi, that's why sabi nga ni Martin Luther, even if the Lord Jesus comes tomorrow, I will still plant a tree. Bakit? Because it will be part of the new creation. Hindi masasayang yung tayo ay mag-invest sa ating creation. 
it will be part of the new creation that God is trying to come into being. So, medyo kailangan po siguro na i-recalibrate natin yung ating pag-iisip tungkol dito. No? Uh, hindi po alam ko saan ang galing yung naging 666, yung vaccine. Ano? And I think ang, pro- uh, ang underlying din na problema rito is meron tayong no dichotomy between faith and science. I think you should realize na ang creation is also God's revelation. Maliwanag yun sa scripture. Eh. Sabi, the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. No, Eventually. At hindi lang yun. Sinasabi sa, sa, well, sa Psalms, Psalms 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and they speak forth. Wala lang ang words, but it speaks of who God is. And of course, dun sa Romans chapter 1, nakita na natin ito. Sinasabi, sabi ni Paul, you know, the eternal power and deity of God has been revealed in the things that have been made. Now, ang task ng science is to discover this creation that God has made. And it is actually a spiritual a task as preaching. You know why? Because as scientists try to describe God's creation in all of its complexity and beauty, no? we are actually what? Revealing a face of our God to humankind. Sa totoo lang, yung scientific enterprise is a very high calling spiritually. Uh, kung ikaw ay talagang mahusay na scientist, no? that's why sila, sila, <clears throat> sila sali, nag-research sila. Nagahanap ng lunas dito sa COVID. And that is as much a spiritual task. In other words, to try and see paano natin maharness yung creational design ng Diyos so that human society flourishes. Y- yan ang task ng mga scientists. Ang problema, pinaghihiwalay natin yun. No? Yung parang naguumpugan uh, yung faith and science. Wala pong dichotomy yun. Walang separation yun. Both yung scripture as well as yung creation are speaking of the knowledge of God. Dapat maliwanag po yun sa atin. So, yung mga iniisip natin na parang mga conspiracy theory na ginawa ito para magkaroon ng population control, itong sila Bill Gates, ganyan-ganyan. Uh, sa totoo lang po, tingin ko mga political po yan ng mga narratives na in-spin ng mga spin doctors uh, na actually binobola lang kalisa sila ni Trump. No? So, nagkaroon po ng mga ganitong narratives, no? Uh, sa totoo lang, yun ang mahirap eh. Because sa, m- m- ang facts are not enough. Importante yung what narratives do you weave out of this. Ano po yung istorya? Uh, itong kailangan nating mga Kristiyano. Na consciousness natin is such na, that it is trained by scripture to discern good from evil. In other words, sabi nga sa so Hebrews, no? We are trained by practice to discern good and evil. Kasi hindi naman all the time, meron tayong scripture at proof text. No? You have to use your mind. And ang, ang Panginoon, binigyan tayo ng, ng napaka-intricate na brains. No? He, he invested a great deal in the human brain para ma-discover din natin mismo yung, yung miraculous na design of His creation. And that is the scientific task hindi po magkahiwalay yung yung science at saka faith. Magkasama yan. Thank you, Doc Melz. Balik muna tayo ulit sa science. Thank you. That's very clear. <laughs> wag kayong, <laughs> wag nating paghiwalayin. At gift din sa atin ng Lord ang mga scientists. At yung kanilang trabaho is as spiritual as uh, the preaching that we receive every Sunday. So, sa mata pala ng Diyos yung ginagawa ni Pastor Noe at yung ginagawa ni Dr. Sally are both spiritual tasks. Okay po. Um, isang tanong mula kay Ma'am Florita Magay Garzon. I'm sure this is um, coming from the States. Sabi niya, how true is it that uh, one and a half months uh, from the vaccination, your immune system will uh, lower and uh, it is only that, uh, it is only after one and a half months that your immune will be able to fight the virus. What say you, Dr. Sally? One and a half months po ba o mas maiksi? 
Gusto ko lang, ano yung tanong na after a certain period of time, ng vac- after vaccination, bababa yung immune system? Ganun ba? Opo, sabi niya, how true is it that uh, okay. the one and a half months after vaccination lowers your immune system? Mm-hmm. And it is only after that period of time that your immune system starts to develop again, claiming stronger than before ah. your vaccination. Okay. Yan po yung kanya. Ah, oh, oh, oh. Sa pagkakaalam ko, no, dun sa mga readings and research na ginawa ko, hindi naman bumababa ang immune system. All right. What happens based on the what based on studies and yung mga antibody uh, levels no uh, in 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 um, the research so first dose after the first dose ng vaccine after two weeks at saka pa lang nagkakaroon ng immune response positive immune response meaning nagperform siya talaga actively ng antibodies laban to sa virus pero partial lang kasi first dose. All right? Mm-hmm. And then after the second dose, okay? It will take mga 3 weeks yan bago talaga mag-mount ng full immune response. So kung sinabing 90% yung efficacy, doon pa lang lalabas talaga yung full response in a positive way. So, hindi naman bumababa yung uh, immune uh, system. Lumalakas pa nga. Okay. Kasi yung vaccine, inaano niya, in-enhance niya yung immune system. Oo, no? Pero of course, gusto, isang gusto ko din i-emphasize, kasama yung vaccine plus other factors, no? To boost the immune uh, system. Yes. Ayan. Sige po. Um, para sa ating mga viewers, extend lang tayo ng konti kasi napaka-interesting nitong tanong na ito at gusto kong i-surface ito. And I, I, perhaps this is the elephant in the room. Sabi ni uh, Jay Laksamana, uh, uh, Doc Sally, apart from vaccine, meron na bang mga na-develop na gamot for COVID-19? May mga groups na nag endorse ng gamot para sa hayop. So ayaw pa niyang pangalanan. <laughs> ano yung medicine na yun? Ako na lang nga. Sige, it's ivermectin. No? So we are getting this from the politicians, from other groups, uh, endorsing ivermectin. Ano ang uh, payo niyo dito, Doc Sally? Okay. Sa ating mga viewers. Right. Una, dun sa unang tanong, kung may mga iba pa bang mga gamot. Definitely, yes. Mahalaga na increase natin yung, sabi nga, eh, you know, armamentarium no? natin to fight uh, COVID. So, vaccine is one. No? Mahalaga yon kasi, I mean, uh, medyo long-term yun. Eh, no? Kahit sabihin natin, hindi pa tayo definite kung how long the immunity lasts, pero at least, you know, six months, a year is something. Number two, marami-rami na rin ng mga gamot no, na ongoing yung clinical trial. No, yung iba part na ng um, tinatawag na guidelines in the management of uh, uh, COVID. No? Yung remdesivir, yung, uh, ano pa ba? yung dexamethasone, although it's not a uh, direct uh, antiviral, but it really helps no? the fight against the inflammation which is really malakas yung inflammation sa COVID. No? And if you remember yung history ng dexamethasone, pinupush siya noon, no? Pero ano ang ano no, medical community? Not until we know for sure kung ano ba yung effect niya, no? And sa mga studies, eh talaga pong nakaka-reduce ng uh, death, no? Nang inflammation ang dexamethasone. Pero hindi yan binibigay sa lahat. Kasi sa mga studies, may mga sub-analysis. So, sino grupo ba ang dapat bigyan ito, no? So, mayroon po tayong mga iba pang mga gamot dyan. Alright, yung ivermectin. No? Hot issue yan, no? Hot na hot. <laughs> too hot to handle nga minsan, do. So, masyadong hot. Yes. So, ang ano dyan, kasi may nakadiscovery nga na mayroong antiviral daw. No? Sa analysis, no, um, maraming signatories, in fact, mga societies, medical, microbiologists, mga ganon, na hindi sapat yung studies to uh, back it up na 
talagang efficacious and safe itong ivermectin. Okay? No, so, ina-advocate na kailangan na larger clinical trial para masigurado. Meron kasi kami tinatawag na uh, ano ba yun? Um, yung bang point na hindi mo sigurado talaga. No? Yung effect niya, yung efficacy and safety. Sa certification ng uh, acceptability ng mga drugs, may ano-ano yan, eh, may stages yan. Or is, stratified. No? Yung pinakamababa is yung uh, opinion na expert. Kahit expert ka, pero opinion mo, hindi naman back talaga yan, hindi, you know, clinically, ano, uh, acceptable yan, no? Uh, okay lang yan na i-report kasi it will contribute to science. And in fact, in fact, pag may mga ganong reports, and then you reach a point with, which we call clinical equipoise. You know? ang, ang question dyan eh, have you reached clinical equipoise? Meaning, is the expert, you know, members of the expert community can say na itong drug na ito ay talagang efficacious for this particular disorder or disease and say, Pag na-reach mo yun, na yes, no, eh talagang it will be part of your guidelines. Pag hindi mo pa na-reach, well, maybe ang next step is really to do a clinical trial. All right. So anong ginawa ng FDA? Merong protocol na dinidevelop ang PCHRD, ang DOST, for clinical trial. Okay. Pangalawa, kasi nasa emergency situation tayo, may mga claims na effective, although Alam mo sa science, minsan may mga controversies dyan eh, no? One publication will say this and the other publication will say this, no? Pero titingnan natin bakit merong disagreement. Maybe it's in the methodology. Maybe it's in the parameters, no? Na ginamit, no? So, i-analyze mo talaga yan, okay? So, binigyan naman ng uh, hindi emergency use, kundi compassionate use, which is allowed dito sa ating bansa. No? So, ibig sabihin nun, meron kang sakit, halimbawa, uh, may, maraming nagko-compassionate use, lalo na sa mga cancer. Kasi hindi lahat ng cancer therapy, mayroon tayo. Iba, meron sa Europe, meron sa ano, na sa literature, effective. No? So, magko-compassionate use, may letter, kung pwedeng i-import, no? at gamitin dito. Pero ang condition doon, dapat monitor talaga ng isang doktor at may responsibility siyang doktor na nagpe-prescribe. He needs to fill up a monitoring sheet and needs to uh, submit the report to FDA. Kasi nga, hindi yung license dito eh. Pinagamit lang for compassion. Mm -hmm. on, no? So yung ivermectin, pinagamit for compassionate use. Ngayon, five hospitals but really not for public, outpatient. Why? Para sa ganun, kung hospital-based, no, mamomonitor maigi ang mga pasyente na pre-prescriban, and very important, ma-assure yung source noong gamot. Ma-assure na talagang uh, nagpa-follow sa tinatawag na manufacturing guidelines, no? A good manufacturing guidelines or GMP na tinatawag. No? Kasi ano mo yung lumalabas ngayon sa street? Mga ano yan, mga sa black market. Hmm. Hindi natin alam yung um, source, yung purity ng substance. No? Mm -hmm. In fact, may mga, from my friends, may, nariri, may na share na mga side effects, no? Uh, you know, mga stomach, ano, upset, meron na nga nag, na push sa liver, sa kidney, no? na meron naman siya talaga ng kidney problem, pero binigyan o uminom, no? so nag-push like, on dialysis, gano'n. So, yun ang against kaming mga, you know, doctor, tsaka mga society. We're not really totally na huwag yung albumectin, but the regulated use through compassionate use ng ivermectin. Because we do not know the quality of the ivermectin being given away dyan sa mga streets. Sa tabi-tabi. Tama. Hmm. 
Thank you, Dr. Ali. Napakalino. Very, very clear. So, may compassionate use, but it needs to be monitored by doctors. Yes. Uh -oh. Health uh, officials or health um, workers. Ayan. Alam mo, I may add lang, no? Yes, yes. Go ahead, Dr. Sinishare sa amin, no? Yung mga prescription. Yung walang pangalan ng doktor o yung scribble. Hindi nagpo-follow ng rules ng prescription, no? Walang PPR, no? Name ng doctor. So sabi lang, ano ba yan? Sige ba ito? Ito. Mahirap uh, tuntunin kung saan nagmula at uh, oh, sino oh. magiging responsable pag oh, nagkaroon oh. ng malaking problema. Napakamahalaga niyan, Dr. Sally. Salamat. Oh, oh. Maybe uh, one, one more question on uh, medicine. Kasi tinitignan ko yung viewers natin, there's still with us. So, uh, okay. extend lang po natin ng konti pa itong ating usapan. No? Uh, isa po, pa pong question tungkol sa remdesivir. Uh, okay. Six months ago, sinabi daw po ng WHO na hindi ito effective, but it's still being administered to patients in other hospitals. And I, I heard that also. One of my cousins contracted COVID at isa sa mga treatment ay yung serving disability. What say you about this, Dr. Sal? Oh, oh, oh. Doon sa clinical trial, no, part yan ng, ano eh, uh, ng solidarity trial. Ang conclusion dyan, hindi na meet yung ano, outcome measure, but promising. May promising. Kasi pwede yun eh. Kasi sa, minsan sa sub-analysis no, ng mga clinical trials, maaari yung overall outcome. Siniset kasi yung outcome na yan even prior no, to the... Sa paggawa yan ng protocol, siniset na yung outcome. So hindi mo yan mababago eh. Kasi yun ang gusto mong endpoint eh. No? hindi na meet talaga yung uh, sinet na outcome. Pero nung nag-sub-analysis sila, nakita nila na mayroong promising ano, mm -hmm. uh, use. Okay. And these are yung mga, I think, more you know, severe cases na na-shorten yung course. Alright? So, maring yun ang ano, naging dahilan kung bakit uh, ina, ano, uh, pinupursue pa yan. No? Kasi, okay. Yun nga, kung in this particular subset of patient, ganun yun eh. Maraming doon sa general clinical trial, hindi effective. Pero they were able to identify a very specific subset of participants mm -hmm. na maganda yung response. Okay. Okay. Hindi naman yung sabi natin 100% efficacious or ano, but maganda yung response like na shorten yung hospital stay, no? So, yun yung mga ganun. Yun yung mga, you know, nuances, mga finer details, no? And also, if I may share, ay yung mga doctors naman, hindi porkit sinabing, oh, ito efficacious and safety, uh, automatic, lahat na bibigyan. Because we practice patient-based management. Meaning, focus ka sa pasyente mo. Eh, kahit na ba okay yung clinical trial, pero kung yung pasyente mo naman, eh, hindi karapat dapat na bigyan nun, hindi mo bibigyan. Patient-centered. Patient-centered. Thank you, Dr. Yes. Sally. Alam mo po, isang oras lang tayo mahigit, pero ang dami ng malinaw na nangyari. It's just that we are encountered by the truth also, no, God's word. Pero, just to, you know, bring this, um, this discussion home, once and for all, kapit sa title natin, vaccine to, Dr. Sally, dapat bang magpaturok? Alright. Um, yes. Kasi yung benefit nun really outweighs the, the risk. Eh, no? Doon sa mga data, sa mga data, ilan yung deaths? And ilan lang yung uh, severe adverse event? No? Napakaliit. Kung i-compare mo doon sa outcome, no, yung namamantay, 2%. Right? 2%. So, yung uh, adverse event naman doon sa mga clinical trial, eh, wala pa nga, ano eh, 0.5%. Eh. So, malaki yung difference, no? no? So, kung i-assess mo yung benefits and the risk, Sabi nga natin, wala namang zero risk eh. Diba? Lahat ng buhay namang may risk talaga. Even water, may risk yan. Pag na-over ano ka ng water, may water intoxicant. Walang risk, walang zero risk. Mm -hmm. So, importante, ma-identify mo yung risk, no? And manage the risk or mitigate the risk. 
no so sasabihin iba ka walang fake ganyan ganyan ano magbabase hindi part of it na din even you taking the risk is you know bringing that no to to god yung risk mo eh oh so yun i think um for the benefit na ma mabawasan na yung ating covid no uh, i I really am an advocate of ano vaccine no and considering the history of vaccine worldwide nawala ang smallpox mm. eradicated na so I think 1987 or 1988 they declare no ng WHO eradicated ng smallpox wala nang nagbibigay ng at wala nang smallpox polio sa western countries almost zero na yung polio no dito na lang pangilan-ilan no sa mga developing countries and then the rubella yung german measles no grabe ang congenital anomaly niyan pag ang pregnant woman nagkaroon ng rubella no so because of the vaccines no so um if you look at the history no of of vaccine i think it has uh, given humanity no Uh, yung ang sinasabi nga ni Ate Nel Bacanina na yung improved well-being no at saka ano nang tao no uh -huh. and kung last last minute ko na ba ito Ay, uh, actually doc sige po you can wrap it up marami pang tanong dito mayroon nagtatanong uh -huh. tungkol sa linwa pero kulang na talaga yung oras natin i would suggest that Marie, Marie. Uh, yes go ahead I, I, i think we should allow people to to still ask questions ah uh, I, i think this is uh, important to them so hindi na bali yung oras kairos okay. moment ito okay sige, kairos moment yes yeah, sige po so isang isang tanong pa sabi po ni um ito kilala ko to kaibigan ko to si uh, pastor uh, Noel sabi niya what about the use of linwa meron daw siyang friend na doctor na who let her husband take it and then naging positive yung results. So, what say you on uh, Linwa, Dr. Sai? Uh, I believe it's a Chinese. Chinese uh, medicine. Oo. Oh, oh, oh. yes. Hindi ako masyadong familiar doon sa content ng Linwa, but I've heard about that, no? Oh, oh. So, hmm. wala ako masyadong, wala ako masasabi tungkol doon. Uh, narinig ko lang na, in fact, meron din akong nalaman, no, na sa isang ospital may COVID, no. So, minamanage siya as COVID talaga. Pero sikreto, binibigyan niya. <laughs> Hindi niya. <laughs> 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 uh, alam mo, maraming ganyan sa mga Pilipino, eh, no. Uh, minsan, may pasyente ako, nahulayan ko, nag, ano ba yun, nung naglalagay ng kandila, na tinunaw, tawas, no. Malim <laughs> na sa ilalim ng una, no? Yes, yes. Ito na huli ko. Sabi ko, ano ho, ito, no? Ay, doktora, sabi niya, tao, asuyan. Ah, sorry po. Ah, well, sabi ko, hindi naman makakasama yan, eh. Sabi ko, no? Hindi naman makakasama. May make combination. Oo, oh, oh, kasi alam mo, mga Pilipino, eh, minsan talaga, ano, eh, eh, ano yan, eh, yung health kasi, eh, no? Hindi, maraming aspeto yan talaga. So I'm not familiar with the linwa but I've heard no maybe one or two na secret maybe correct correct opo oh, uh -oh. and then um I I so agree with you maybe Dr. Melba can help us uh, think this through bakit tayo sa Pilipino we subscribe to science pero hindi natin ma let go yung mga uh, mga pamahiin natin no so maybe Dr. Melba can comment on that later sa ating integration <laughs> Um, we have comments here from uh, Sir uh, David Nick Dao. Sabi niya, nag-second dose daw siya ng Moderna at after uh, 10 to 12 hours ay nag-fever daw po siya. At pati yung, health, uh, pati yung heart rate niya at pulse rate niya. Pero tinanong daw niya po kayo. At I'm sure sinagot niya siya at nag-high shot ka mag-anak niya yata. Ito or very close brother friend. Paul, yes, brother. Hi, okay, brother. Hello po. Ayan. Hello po, Sir David. So, siguro, Doc Sally, as we continue to wind down, no, pa, talagang pa, pa, pababa na din yung ating diskusyon. Um, ano po ang mga dapat na paghahanda na gagawin ng mga tao na magpapabakuna na? Ayan. So yun po, dalawa. Yung magpapabakuna na at yung wala pa sa listahan gaya ko. Parang nasa A11, 12, 13, 14 <laughs> yata ako. Dulong-dulo pa ako. So ano yung mga dapat naming gawin, Doc Sally? Oo, no? 
Um, una, like for example, kung ikaw ay merong mga comorbids na sinatawag, no? may diabetes ka o may high blood, dapat regular yung pag-take ng medicine. Alright? Tsaka, siyempre, at least, na teleponuhan mo yung doktor mo, dok, gusto ko magpabakuna, so ano ba, may ganito akong sakit, no? So, kung controlled naman, no, at uh, regular yung medicine, wala naman contraindication dyan. Nung nagpabakuna ako, ay meron akong pre-diabetes sa kami high blood ako, no? So, I'm on maintenance ng um, uh, gamot, ng high blood, tsaka diabetes, no? So, Tinake ko talaga yung mga gamot na yan, pero regular naman ako. Pagdating ko doon sa pagbakuna, no, sa PGH, sabi sa akin ng uh, resident, Dok, mataas ang BP nyo. Sabi ko, baka ako kinakabahan lang. <laughs> Siguro nininerdus lang ako. Siguro re- relax muna kayo. So, may definitely may anxiety ng doctors, may anxiety yeah. din eh, no? Kasi oh, na s'yempre, no, COVID vaccine, ganyan, lahat excited, ganyan, ano. So, nakalma na ba? Tapos sabi niya, mataas ho yung heart rate niyo, no? Nasa 95. Ganyan, no? Eh kasi umiinom um, ako ng kape. <laughs> sabi ko, umiinom um, ako ng kape, you know, all the reasons, no? Pero s'yempre, sabi niya, doc, hindi kinakabahan lang kayo. So, possibly talaga na minsan may konting increase ng blood pressure or heart rate, no? Kasi may anxiety ka, you know? So, mm-hmm. yun. Pero hindi naman absolute contraindicated, yun. Then, of course, siyempre dapat, you no know, very positive ang outlook mo, no? Na, uh, you, ano, you commit to do that, no? You, you prayed about it, no? So, pinag-pray din ng mga friends mo and family, ganyan, no? So, yun lang naman yung ganong uh, preparation talaga. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Doc Sally. Alam niyo po, ang daming nagpapasalamat ngayon ah. sa ating comment section dahil nalinawan daw po sila. Maraming salamat sa information. Sabi, very well explained. Yes, Dr. Sally, you want to add something? Ako. All right. Ito yung ayokong inisi, no? Of course, mahalaga yung vaccine. Pero huwag natin kakalimutan. No? Kasi hindi pa tayo out of the woods eh. We wear our masks, we wear our shields, face shields, we do uh, hand hygiene no? and physical distancing until such time that uh, we reach uh, you know, the herd immunity, kagaya ng Israel, no? Wala, yung marami sa kanila hindi na nagmamas, no? lumalabas na sila. Ganun. So let's not forget no, to do those and also increase our natural immunity by good nutrition, exercise, lalo na na ano tayo dito sa loob ng bahay. So kahit sa loob ng bahay, dapat ang exercise good nutrition, and sleep. Mahalaga, mahalaga pala ang sleep sa COVID because it strengthens your immune system sleep. Wow. Yun <laughs> Tama. Apat dapat. Ano nga po ba yung apat? Supportan natin to. Air circulation, physical uh-huh. distance, one meter or more. Always wear your mask and face shield at 30 minutes na interaction lang. Or yes. 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 Ayan. Pero yeah. pwedeng mahaba ang kwentuhan sa Zoom. Yes. Tara ngayon. Humaba tayo. Okay. Yeah. May tanong po at ibabato ko na ang tanong na ito sa ating uh, minamahal na si Dr. Melba. Sabi po uh, dito ay uh, ano daw po mga passages, Dr. Melba, from the scripture that we can use to encourage our mga kababayan kapatid to think about and really consider getting their uh, vaccines. At uh, maraming maraming salamat po. Doc Sally, madaming bumabati sa'yo sa Facebook. So, uh, I would really suggest na batiin niyo din po sila. Go to the comment section later. Awesome. And, later. I will. Opo, at this point, pasa ko na po ito kay Dr. Melba. Dr. Melba, para po sa paglalago. Kayo na po. Okay. Siguro it's not so much na meron tayong mga proof text, no? Although we do have very clear na mga uh, scripture verses saying uh, yung nature uh, kailangan pag-aralan no because it also reveals uh, yung nature of god now yung genesis 1 is very clear then you know na yung sa genesis yung tinatawag na cultural mandate yung sabi niya go multiply you know subdue the earth fill the earth ganyan and rule over creation ang ibig sabihin noon is that ang Lord has given us uh, capacity. Meron tayong ability to imprint din ang creation. Apart from, kasi alam nyo, ang creation was given to us in the raw. No? 
At uh, sabi nga ng isang theologian, he left all the science, no? Undiscovered, all the poems undone, or unwritten, all the all the songs unsung, yung mga ganyan. He left this to human creation. Uh, for the discovery no ng, ng secrets ng kanyang creation and so i think yung kailangan we need to take seriously yung mga scientific discoveries kasi ito ay part ng unfolding wisdom of god no sabi the manifold wisdom of god is now being revealed through the churches so as scientists explore creation and give it to us no in uh, in wonder na Ganito ang ating uh, mga katawan, ganito ang ating uh, nature. I mean, th those are mga scientific facts that we need to really celebrate because it tells us about who God is. So, yun po yung uh, kumbaga eh, thematic na na frame no for for thinking about this. Now, in relation sa sa fact ng ng science and faith, I think it's important to recognize na ang science by its very nature is provisional. Yung sinasabi nga ni meron ako natuturan kay Sally yung ano sawa niya yung um, uh, equipose no? <laughs> yung clinical equipose na matagal mangyari no? Then once and dyan yan then it becomes a consensus in the scientific community. Uh, sa totoo lang Uh, ang ang science is is provisional hindi absolute ang mga statements niyan uh, yung mga researches sabi nga ni Sally no depende sa ano yung parameters mo anong measures mo ano yung sampling mo ano yung ginawa mo dito in other words maraming mga factors uh, which make up a certain scientific fact so while we are prepared to uh, accept it dahil pinag-aralan no Uh, we need to hand it to the to our scientific uh, na mga tao. At the same time, we need to also say na at the end of the day, whatever choices we make, uh, anong klaseng bakuna, kailan ako magpapakabakuna, anong klaseng katawan meron ako, yung mga comor comorbidities ko, and so on. At the end of the day, that is your own individual discernment before God. Looking at all the scientific evidence, looking at uh, what is possible given yung yung mga vulnerabilities i think at the end of the day ikaw rin lang magsasabi sa sarili mo and and by the way we all have a responsibility kasi sabi ang bodies natin is the temple of the holy spirit so ibig sabihin we have to be very very careful what we do with our bodies hindi lang in relation to the vaccine but also in relation to the whole safety protocols no Uh, some of us, akala natin dahil nabakunan na tayo, we don't take seriously yung sinasabi nga ni Sally na maraming safety protocols that we still need to exercise. Kagaya ng safety, <clears throat> yung sa mask, yung face shield and everything. no? So in other words, uh, at the end of the day, tayo po yung magdi-discern what is good for us given all the facts that are there. no? Uh, at saka bigyan din natin ng, ng karampatang ano siguro, thought yung inumpisahan ni Sally kanina na lumabas yung inequality alam po nyo, if there is anything that uh, historically is being revealed to us itong pan panahon ng pandemic nalala ko merong comment dyan si, yung mapangalan niya si Al Al ba yun? Uh, sabi niya baka ito lahat o invento lang ito ganun ganun I, I think we need to to realize na uh, yung mga ganitong pandemic actually is a revelation. Uh, apocalypse. Sa totoo lang, kaya meron time sensing yung mga Kristiyano. Parang ay, end, end times na to. Kasi nga, there are some massive uh, rearrangements that we need to do doon sa reality that God is wanting us to face. At una-una na doon, yung inequality. Uh, to me, uh, meron tayong temptation na bumalik lang tayo doon sa old normal. No? Kasi nababagot na tayo ngayon. Hindi. We should try and ask God, ano po yung mga nire-reveal ninyo? No? 
Ano yung mga apocalyptic na revelations? Ito yung nagsabi ng apocalyptic, disclosure, revelation, the unveiling. No? Uh, itong pandemic na to has unveiled to us many things. It has unveiled yung uh, ineptitude ng gobyerno natin. It has unveiled yung inadequacy ng health system natin. It has unveiled yung inequality. It has unveiled many things no, that we need to face as social realities. At maka itong liminal space na to, I always say, is really God's call to us to face all of these things that have been disclosed, that have been revealed, and rearrange social reality. Uh, hindi yung babalik lang tayo sa old normal. No? But we go back to what the true normal should be according to God's word. So sa akin, ito po ang... Uh, challenge sa atin bilang mga simbahan. Uh, ano ang nire-reveal ng Diyos sa atin? Ano yung revelation sa atin? Uh, harapin natin yun. And we should try and think through pa paano tayo gagawa ng bagong normal which really is in accordance with what we believe in scripture. Kung akong tatanungin po ninyo, siguro yun ang dapat na ano, the pag-isipan natin. Ano yung ini-expose ng Diyos sa atin? Ano ba yung mga bagay na kailangan nating bigyan ng attention? No? Uh, yung massive, halimbawa, na starvation at nagutom ng ating mga tao. In a way, hindi naman po, and, and I think we should not judge one way or the other. No? Uh, may mga tao na talagang gusto ng ivermectin, gusto ng mga ano, kasi syempre, pag ikaw ay may sakit, eh, desperado ka na, whatever it will help, no? pati itong mga superstitions natin. Uh, in other words, we, we, we try because we're human beings, no? na, and we know that we are out of control pagka tayo nagkasakit. So, whatever will seem to help, no? ganun yun, lifeline ng mga tao yan. And I don't think we need to judge people who go that way. At the same time, we should also not judge people na Who, who have a great deal of faith sa mga scientific researches no, tungkol dito sa mga vaccines. Dahil pinag-aralan naman talaga yan. Uh, at hindi naman lahat yan eh dahil sa conspiracy theory. No? Even if there are people who cast aspersions now and so much doubt sa World Health Organization na bayaran niya ng China and all the rest of it. Some of it may be true. We don't know. Uh, pero we, I think we allow each other to make yung sinasabi sa Hebrews na making our judgments and discernment that, and we learn you know, by practice sabi, to discern good from evil. So ito lamang po siguro ang, ano, ang ating uh, uh, pag-isipan. Ano ang sinasabi ng Diyos sa atin together at tayo individually uh, how do we take care of ourselves and others as well as a community. Uh, siguro dapat marinig din yung call for a herd immunity no? na sana magkaroon tayo ng ganun kagaya sa mga Scandinavian countries so ito po ang challenge sa atin na we help each other so that we have a herd immunity uh, yun po siguro ang immediate agenda natin salamat po at salamat kay Sally po the very al alam niyo si Sally is a very good teacher eh. very ma maliwanag na pag uh, na pag uh, bibigay sa atin ng you know ng ng linaw sa maraming bagay so thank you Sally thank you so much Dr. Sally tama very clear ang paliwanag ni Dr. Sally kaya sa mga kasama natin ngayon sa ECP sa please don't forget to share this discussion with your friends. Kapag ka, na lumalabas na naman yung mga myths about the vaccine, lalo na kapag ginagamitan kayo ng verse para hindi magpabakuna, let's refer them to our learnings ngayong gabing ito from Dr. Sally. Maraming maraming salamat po, Dr. Sally. Dr. Melba, thank you so much. At sa mga kasama namin ngayon, faithfully still with us, thank you very much. Magandang gabi po. Magkita-kita tayo ulit next week. God bless you. Bye.